This video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. This is one of the most ambitious RPG projects of 2019, and it has just been released. Best part? It's totally free. Raid is the most immersive experience that you can find on a smartphone, and it can really only be compared to big console or PC titles. It has an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, giant boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. So go into the description of this video now and download Raid only through my link to get 50,000 silver immediately and a free epic champion as part of their new player program, courtesy of the dev team. See you there! On patrol somewhere off the Philippines late one night in the middle of 1943, a Japanese destroyer slowly cruises through shallow coastal waters. Her captain scans the horizon with his binoculars, but the seas are pitch black. He's not worried about an American submarine attack. The waters are too shallow here, and besides bristling with weapons as she is, the destroyer is more than capable of defending defending herself if attacked, either by sea or air. The big guns of the American battleships also don't worry him. The Americans are still rebuilding their fleet after the devastation of Pearl Harbor half a year ago. Even if by some miracle an American battleship was in the vicinity, well, Japanese destroyers are formidable themselves and he could always call for air support from a nearby airfield. It would be a suicidal attack. Confident in his ship and his men both, the Japanese captain allows himself to relax for a moment. He even considers retiring to his quarters and letting his second assumed command for yet another uneventful night. Then suddenly, the ship is rocked by an explosion at her bow. Submarines? Impossible! The waters are too shallow. Scanning the seas, he doesn't see the silhouette of a large American ship against the moonlit waters either. Suddenly, a second explosion strikes the destroyer midships, sending the bridge crew to the floor. As they pick themselves up, they hear the approaching roars of engines. Aircraft? Impossible. No chance American airplanes could be so accurate in the dead of night. Yet the roar of engines grows and soon there's a third explosion on the ship lists. Scanning the dark with spotlights, Japanese crewmen catch glimpses of something unbelievable. Small, agile speedboats loaded with torpedo tubes and machine guns are roaring by the big destroyer, reaching speeds of up to 45 miles per hour. The big destroyer turns her guns to defend herself, but the small boats are too fast and agile, and in minutes, they've landed several more direct hits. As the Japanese destroyer sinks, a small fleet of four American PT boats roars off into the night, disappearing as suddenly as they had arrived. The legendary PT boat of World War II had its origins in the days before World War I, when military planners saw potential for a small, high-speed ship that could deliver torpedoes and flee from combat before the enemy could sink it. Despite several successful trials and some interest from both the Americans and the British, the designs were scrapped in favor of big gun battleships and cruisers. This was the age of the dreadnought, after all, and the world firmly believed that naval power lay in big ships and even bigger guns. Yet as technology progressed and even more powerful engines were developed, small speedboats began setting incredible speed records of up to 60 miles per hour on calm seas. Speed derbies featuring even faster boats had become popular in America, and in the late 1930s, military engineers began seeing the potential once more for small, agile boats capable of launching deadly hit-and-run attacks. In 1930, with the probability of the U.S. going to war soon, the U.S. Navy sponsored a design competition for a highly mobile attack boat. Reaching out to the designers of speedboats used in popular derbies, the competition led to the construction of eight prototype boats, which would compete in two different classes. The first class of boats was for 54-foot boats, and the second for larger, more heavily armed 70-foot boats. Prizes for winning designs were awarded on the 30th of March, 1939, and on June 8th of that year, contracts were awarded to the the Fogel Boatyard of Miami, Florida, and the Fisher Boatworks of Detroit, Michigan. This led to the development of the first four official PT boats to be tested and refined by the U.S. Navy. In March of 1941, a squadron of Navy PT boats made a run from Key West to New York. The 70-footers, as they were known, were heavily pounded by seas reaching 8 to 10 feet in height, and the boats were only able to travel at moderate speeds well below their maximum. The crew suffered from extreme discomfort and fatigue, and the boats each suffered several structural failures. The hulls were clearly deficient, and the Navy ordered immediate overhauls to the basic design. Later that July, the Navy gathered together nine boats of different designs and held an open ocean trial test to test each boat. The sailors involved would reference the test as the Plywood Derby, so named for the light wood from which most of the boats were made. The open ocean trial would run a course of 220 miles, with each boat at full throttle, and each ship would carry either live ordnance or copper ingots that would stand in for actual weapons. Of the nine ships that partook, only six finished the trial successfully, with the fastest
this ship clocking in at an average speed of 45.71 miles per hour. A second trial later in August would see the ships running a 213 mile course through much heavier seas, with waves reaching heights of 16 feet. Six designs took part in the trial, and all but one completed successfully. Even with rough seas, the fastest boat reached an average speed of 31.6 miles per hour. The Bureau of Ships quickly issued a report encouraging the immediate construction of several PT boat designs, all to be armed with dual torpedo tubes, machine guns, and depth charges. Each boat varied in crew size, but typically ran from three officers and 14 enlisted men up to as many as 17, depending on the total weapons loadout of each ship. The hulls were made of two sheets of mahogany planking with a glue-impregnated cloth layer in between the inner and outer planks. At a time when ships of war featured heavy belts of steel armor that were anywhere from several inches to a foot or more thick in places, the wood panel construction of a PT boat must have seemed suicidal. Yet the lightweight wooden hulls allowed the boats to reach incredible speeds, even when fully loaded with weapons. And a PT boat that had just emptied its torpedo tubes and spent its depth charges could speed away at speeds up to 60 miles per hour. Plus, the wooden hulls were incredibly easy to repair and the ships were capable of sustaining catastrophic damage and surviving. When future President John F. Kennedy's PT boat was ran over by a Japanese destroyer and cut in half, the two halves of the ship managed to remain afloat for a full 12 hours. PT-323 when cut in half by a kamikaze aircraft on December 10, 1944, also remained afloat for hours. PT-308 collided with yet another PT boat by accident during a night mission and had her stern completely sheared off, yet managed to return to base for repairs. Easy to repair and extremely survivable after receiving battle damage, the wooden hulls of PT boats also afforded them a great degree of protection from metal detecting sea mines, and in some cases even from enemy torpedoes. On the 5th of November 1943, a torpedo fired at PT-167 shot straight through the hull of the boat without detonating, and the boat remained in action until being repaired the next day. Nicknamed the Mosquito Fleet or Devil Boats by the Japanese, PT boats may have been small, but they packed a formidable punch. Each boat carried a primary anti-ship arrangement of anywhere from two to four Mark VIII torpedoes, packed with 466 pounds of TNT. The torpedoes had a range of 16,000 yards and could zip through the water as fast as a PT boat itself, reaching speeds of up to 41 miles per hour. However, the explosive charges that fired them from their containers became a dead giveaway when conducting nighttime attacks, and thus they were eventually replaced in 1943 by lighter, more powerful Mark 13 torpedoes, featuring a 600-pound Torpex-filled warhead. Torpex was a new explosive which featured 50% greater explosive energy by mass over traditional TNT, seriously upgrading the firepower of America's PT boats. The new torpedoes were also fired from roll-off launch racks, eliminating the telltale explosive burst that would give PT boats away at night. Each PT boat was also equipped with at least two twin 50 cal machine guns, which could be used as anti-aircraft weapons. On the stern would also be mounted a 20mm Ehrlichon cannon, which was capable of punching through light ship armor. Forward of the chart house would be two 30 caliber Lewis machine guns on pedestal mounts, as well as one or two 30 caliber Browning machine guns on forward torpedo racks. The PT boat literally bristled with armament, yet a year into the war, the US decided that PT boats definitely needed more guns and started installing additional 20mm cannon amidships and on the forward deck. Yet for some PT boat captains and enterprising engineers with a lot of time on their hands, even this wasn't enough. PT boats became famous for the high degree of customized and home-built retrofits, with engineers at forward bases in the Pacific mounting everything onto PT boats, from 37mm aircraft cannons to rocket launchers and even mortars. After proving how successful the additional firepower was, the Navy immediately adopted the modifications into the official design. Still, custom modification pervaded the PT boat fleet, and one of the most famous was future US President John F. Kennedy's PT-109, which featured a single-shot Army M3 37mm anti-tank gun that the crew had commandeered. The enterprising sailors and mechanics removed the wheels and lashed it to 2x8 timbers before affixing the cannon to the bow. The M3 anti-tank gun proved devastatingly effective against ships, despite being made to take out enemy tanks, but the single shot limited its usefulness. Enterprising PT Boat's crew found the answer to their problem by cannibalizing the Oldsmobile M4 aircraft automatic cannons from crashed P-39 Arakoba 
fighter planes. Once more, demonstrating their effectiveness in the field of ingenious customizations, the autocannon was approved as part of the factory design. Originally conceived as anti-ship weapons, PT boats saw their roles vary dramatically as the war in the Pacific raged on. Some boats were converted to gunboats, featuring nothing but heavy machine guns, which would aid landing U.S. troops or in the rescue of downed pilots. Others would provide close-in fire support with mortars for troops near the beaches, delivering more accurate fire than the big guns of battleships and destroyers sitting half a dozen or more miles away. Yet their primary role of the PT boat was always to harass and interdict Japanese shipping, and to do their job effectively, they would operate primarily at night. While at first only a few PT boats were fitted with radar, eventually the use of radar spread across the PT fleet, which dramatically improved the success of nighttime raids on Japanese ships. During the Solomon Islands campaign, PT boats waged a deadly campaign against Japan's resupply efforts, dubbed the Tokyo Express. Operating in groups of six to eight, the boats would lie in wait for Japanese ships, loitering silently just out of torpedo range. Once a target appeared, the boats would roar to life and pounce on the unsuspecting enemy ship, loosing a deadly volley of torpedoes. Though their primary targets were Japanese shipping barges, which proved difficult to sink by submarines due to their low draft hull design, the PT boats regularly took on much more heavily armed opponents, even battleships. During the campaign, Japanese captains were cautious about operating their big capital ships in any water known to be prowled by the deadly American speed demons. Yet the most effective use of PT boats was as barge busters. After losing heavy numbers of resupply barge ships to Allied naval power, both the Germans in the Mediterranean and the Japanese in the Pacific began operating their barges at night in very shallow waters. This would make it impossible for Allied destroyers to follow them due to the risk of running aground, and allow the barges to be protected by shore-based firepower. Yet the shallow waters were no problem for the American PT boats, which would zip in at daredevil speeds and deliver deadly torpedoes while strafing the barges with cannon and machine gun fire. By the time shore-based firepower could respond, the Americans would be long gone, leaving nothing but a sinking wreck in their wake. The use of PT boats in the Pacific was directly credited as the reason why Japanese soldiers suffered severe food, ammunition, and personnel resupply problems. One captured Japanese soldier's diary described his fear of American PT boats, describing them as the monster that roars, flaps its wings, and shoots torpedoes in all directions. America's first great naval commander, John Paul Jones, once said, I wish to have no connection with any ship that does not sail fast, for I intend to go in harm's way. And we're sure that he would have been mightily pleased with the legendary speed demons of World War II. Fast, agile, and packing a deadly punch, PT boats were the knife fighters of the Pacific, darting into extremely close ranges to deliver crippling blows against enemy ships that ranged from supply barges to destroyers and battleships. These were extraordinary weapons, manned by extraordinary men who knew the only thing standing between them and death was one thing, speed. Thought this video was interesting? Check out our other video, 50 Insane Submarine Facts That Will Shock You. See you next time.